Good morning, everybody. Greg Sleater, February 22nd, post-run walk-off. Have any of you guys ever seen Phantom of the Opera? In a Sleater home, it's not uncommon that any one of our six children will break out singing songs of a wide range, but uh, certainly that might be one of the popular musicals that you may hear a song from. Anyways, there's a more obscure song from that musical called Masquerade. And uh, it's really kind of fascinating and maybe even epitomizes the storyline of the movie that there's this artificial world that we all enter into and where secrets can lie in the depths, lie in the deep, right? And uh, on center stage there in that drama is all of us, right? All of us find ourselves in this world, whether we wear masks or not, you may see where I'm going with this, yearning to be known and to know. So masquerades, a culture of masquerades our deepest desire to be known and to know. And that's applicable to humans, right? That we are made for community, we're made for self-presence. And if you're Catholic, which is to say Christian from the beginning as God designed it, he made himself present to us in human form. The physical matters. We have a yearning to connect in the flesh. Physical things matter, gestures matter, words matter. And so, uh, and our yearning to be known and to know at the heart of this crisis that we're experiencing, we see it play out with the civil unrest, we see it play out in the political tumult. We see the weaponization, if you will, of our human situation of being behind masquerades and yearning for intimacy and the enemy weaponizes all of that in political form. And uh, really to awaken us, to defeat the enemy, Jesus, though he was in the form of God, it says in Philippians 2, he did not deem equality with God something to be grasped at. It's more the sense that he loved us so much he left his comfortable space to enter into our world, to be flesh and blood present to us. Now, I do recognize with the COVID situation, there are some legitimate, reasonable steps that we need to take, given the science, given the circumstances to manage it. But for the human spirit and the heart looking for intimacy, Packaging us up and turning the mass into a masquerade is not the answer. Uh, and a good number of us don't wear masks. We respect distance. None of us have gotten COVID over a year. Um, we respect the circumstances around us, but in mass, that place where we are called to be self-present to God, adoramus literally means mouth to mouth. It is the place where the human spirit goes to meet God and the physical does matter. Our gestures do matter. And uh, I guess, let me just punctuate it. We find masks an unnecessary obstruction to the sacramental nature of adoramus. Again, it means mouth to mouth with God. It's an unnecessary obstruction and it does matter. It does matter to me, it does matter to my wife, it matters to my kids. That this is the one place that uh, we ought to be able to go. You can in restaurants, right? Have you been in a restaurant where people are sitting at tables? with masks on, or at the ultimate banquet table, or at the ultimate feast. The promise of our deepest need, the satisfaction of our greatest hunger, the provision of our poverty. In our parish, there is the chapel that has been reserved for those who are particularly fearful. So the solution is, if you have symptoms, you don't come. If you do, can we please at least reserve some place in church, our parishes, where we don't have to buy into a culture of fear unnecessarily where we can uh, see the one place in this crazy, tumultuous, masquerade-oriented world, the mass of Christ who made himself present to us, and I might add, unto death. I would like to be able to, to choose that without judging anyone else. I would like to be able to choose for myself, my family, the community that chooses this to, uh, to be without a mask before my God and with my community. That's my thoughts on today. God bless you. Join us at ilovemyfamily.us.